G'day guys, Carla from Go Travel. Today in the garage with the big girl. Gonna play with the rack today. So a lot of you might have noticed in my videos, I've actually taken the cane toad rack off but left the back bones on. <laughs> Mainly the reason I did that is because I couldn't wash the roof. What I've done is I left the back bones because I wanted to keep my awning. So what I did is I went and got some yellow box section, put some rib nuts in it and braced it. You see this is a little bit dicky at the moment too because I've actually pulled it off mounted the awning because I've got a different idea. It's not rigid enough to actually carry a load. I'm going to put a couple of bars on top, a couple of crossbars. I went down and bought some alloy uni strut. So I don't really carry that much on the roof. So I don't need a full rack. Three mil thick, 40 by 25. Drilled a couple of holes in it, chamfered the edges. So it should sit nicely up there. And this is obviously more rigid. I'm actually going to wrap the coat it. This obviously sits up one inch. So the old rack sat up uh, 32 mil, I think it was, something like that. So it sits a little bit lower. Basically, this will give all the bracing I need for the awning. Still be strong enough that I can put treads on it if I want to, which treads is probably the only thing I really do put on the roof. The other good thing about Unistrut is I'm going to get some, uh, you can actually get like captive Unistrut nuts or channel lock nuts that go in here. So I'm actually thinking I'm going to bolt the awning up a little bit higher. So whilst I love how the awning sits, nice and low, I'm actually gonna lift that up so it'll sit an inch higher, which means that I should be able to get it closer to the car. Because that's one thing that I don't really love about the awning, is for me to clear the car, I had to sit it off the rack a bit. So what I'm hoping is by lifting it up that extra inch, I should be able to shimmy it across, get it a little bit closer to the car, and just make it a little bit more sleeker. Get the big girl out of the garage, and we'll set up our dodgy garage spray booth. Bit dark in here sorry about that this is what i'm doing dodgy spray painting booth wise put some wire hangers on the garage runner oh, i did paint the inside of the channel on the table this one here is basically done a few little imperfections but not too bad uh, this one here i'll give these what well, these two a second coat this one here ran out of wrap to paint so i had to go get more paint and this here Bare, unpainted. This wrap the coating stuff is supposed to stick like shit to a blanket, so hopefully it works. There's a few different variants of this stuff you can buy. This is the Raptor 1K, so multi purpose protective coating. This doesn't have the hardener in it, but this is 40 bucks a can opposed to 100 bucks a can for the other stuff. One thing I will say, it does not go anywhere near as far as what you'd think, but that's also probably due to my crap painting skills. Two and a half done at one coat. I wanted to put two coats on it, so I went stuff it and just went and bought another two cans. Because of the Black Friday sales, I managed to pick this stuff up for 32 bucks a can, so it's 100 bucks. I would bet that you could go down to a powder coater and get them professionally powder coated for not much more. So just keep that in the back of your mind. I'm not convinced this is the best option. Painting for me is like stickers. I don't think I've ever successfully done it, but you know what? I'm going to give it a go again. <laughs> this ship's already sailed, so we're into it. What I'll do is I'm going to actually grease and wax, remove all these again just because they've sat overnight because I had to wait until the next day to get more paint. But basically, like gravel can, just shake it up for two minutes. I couldn't find a lot of info on this stuff either, so I will actually put a little bit of footage of this Raptor 1K. I'll show you like a little bit of the painting and that and how it comes out, because it, it comes out really weird. Like it's, uh, it's very thick <laughs> and it's got a lot of gusto behind it when you, you spray it. I probably am the worst painter, so I've shaken that up. Probably shook it up for about five minutes. There's no resistance in the marble anymore. So we'll have a go at it anyway. And you need to be a piece further away than what you think, even though this is still in a way too close. And the one thing I discovered, the worst thing is trying to actually paint down in the channel. Any painters, let me know. How can I improve my painting techniques? Because they suck. And obviously this will move as I try and paint it. So technique wise, this is probably the worst way to do it, but anyway, we'll have a go. Come on, that is a can cooked. Two second coats, one full first coat. We still got one left. So this shit, 
don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> it's like a bloody bogan huff and paint. <laughs> One thing that I didn't consider is uh, consider paint fumes. <laughs> so anyway. Alrighty, that is two coats on every bar. We've used three cans of Raptor. <laughs> now, the best thing about the garage is it's always hot in here. So these should bake nicely. This is at two hours. So it recommends three and a half to four. So we'll leave for another two hours before we bolt them on. But even my shitty painting skills, they're not looking too bad. All painted up, ready to mount. So we'll pull these old ones off, mount the new ones. Now the Raptor coating, the multi-purpose coating, the Raptor 1K. Look, I think the texture in that came up all right. It seems good. We'll let it harden over a few, give it a week or so before we wash it. Hopefully with a little bit of luck, it stays on. Like I say, this stuff's supposed to stick like shit to a blanket. So it's supposed to be able to just adhere to aluminium without needing primer or anything. But time will tell. I hope it does because three cans of this cost me pretty much hundred bucks. Obviously trying to get on the inside of the strut channel. It was much more difficult than I thought, um, and I don't know why I thought it was going to be easy. <laughs> but anyway, this stuff, it's pretty good, but it just, like I say, I would have thought I would have got all four of them bars with one can. It took me three to get two coats on them. And I will say, I only just had enough to get that second coat on the last bar too. So, yeah, I, whilst I do love the idea of it, I just don't think it's the best way to wrap the coat anything. So I just used all stainless button head bolts, nylock nuts underneath, so that's not going anywhere. I think this uni strut's good for, I think it's 70 kilos a meter. The spans on this range from 122 to 125, so look, put in a factor of safety, call it 50 kilos, which a set of treads that are dirty, the awning that's braced on the side of the backbone, none of that's ever going to exceed it anyway. Um, it is three mil structural uni strut, so I'm thinking it'll be okay. We'll see the longevity of the Raptor paint, whether or not it sticks to alloy or not. We'll find that out the hard way. Something different, I don't really use a rack that often anyway. It's mainly, like I said, to brace the awning, keep the awning up. That's how close it sits to the roof in these middle bars. My original idea of, of mounting bars under slung, it just doesn't work. It's too close in the middle to the roof. You've got all the clearance at the front to do it, but end at the back, but yeah, in the middle, it's just too tight, too close. I think I like it. Do you think I should put a light bar on the front, tidy it up and just finish it off? Just hang it down. I think that's an option. I think a light bar, as much as I didn't want to put a light bar on this, I think it'll just clean the front of it up and make it look a bit better. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Anything, feel free, comment it below. Before you roast me about roof racks and load ratings and whatnot, just remember, it's gonna be unlikely that this thing will ever hold any weight. Maybe 10 kilos from treads, that's about it. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe and until next time, go travel.